Last week, there was a bug in Google Chrome that prevented people from being able to use passwords that they had saved in the browser. And since that's such a common thing for people to do, and people basically will just use Google Chrome as their only form of password management, there were a lot of people who couldn't log into anything. Now, on one hand, I am glad that more and more people are starting to use some sort of password manager, and hopefully they're also generating strong random passwords for their accounts too, instead of just storing ones that they made up, which are likely just simple permutations of one password that wasn't very good to begin with. Uh, but really, you should be using a standalone free and open source password manager like KeePassXC or even Pass, the standard Unix password manager if you're on a Unix based OS, instead of a whole web browser like Google Chrome. Now, part of the reason I recommend these instead of an in browser password manager is because web browsers are very large, complex pieces of software with a lot of moving parts that can fail. And that's exactly what happened to the password manager that's built into Chrome on July 24th. People's already saved passwords, you know, passwords they have been using for years and years, seem to just vanish and newly saved passwords were also disappearing from Chrome's built-in password manager on the M127 version of the Chrome browser on the Windows desktop specifically. Now in Google Workspaces where Google tracked the issue, they mentioned that only 2% of users out of the entire 25% of the entire user base where this new version of Chrome was rolled out were affected. But the actual number of people affected would have to be pretty high if you think about it because we're talking about the world's most popular browser on the world's most popular desktop operating system. Millions of people around the world likely had their saved passwords vanish into thin air last Wednesday, while the non-Chrome browser chads were able to make fun of the Chrome normies on Twitter because, of course, their passwords and their autofill options were still working. Now, the bright side to this incident is that users were only affected by this outage in the Chrome password manager for just under 18 hours, and the problem was resolved by Thursday evening. So all that Chrome users had to do then, uh, and now if you're still experiencing this issue, is restart your browser and you should be good. All those old passwords will reappear for you. But you know, 18 hours is still a long time to not have access to your passwords. And mainly it just blows my mind that more people still don't have dedicated password managers in current year. Like they're relying on Chrome and the fact that so many people are relying on Chrome or relying on any browser in general to manage passwords, to do something as important and sensitive as that is strong evidence that we really do live in an age where the browser is pretty much all people are using within their operating system. In fact, Google was able to build their operating system, Chrome OS, around this concept. But because the browser is one of the most used processes on any operating system, it has become the biggest target for hackers, which is the main reason why I wouldn't recommend using any web browser as your password manager. Because if you think about it, a database of all of your passwords for all of your online accounts has got to be one of the most valuable pieces of data in most cases for most people. So letting your browser handle that, handle that piece of data is like keeping your most valuable treasures on the front lines of a battle. Plus, it would be a little bit awkward for storing passwords for things that aren't in your browser, like Steam, Discord, you know, SSH passwords, VPN passwords, things like that. That's really one of the main reasons why I just never bothered to use the browser to manage my passwords, because I've got passwords for a lot of things that just aren't in my browser. <laughs>
Now, even if you don't use Google Chrome to manage your passwords, you may still have been affected by Google's failure to handle authentication correctly with a totally different but still somewhat related incident. So there has been a hacking campaign going on for a few months now where malicious actors were able to create Google Workspace accounts associated with email addresses that belong to the victim's very own domain without the hacker having to actually access the victim's email in order to complete email authentication for the Google Workspace account. So let me explain a bit more if all of that sounded confusing. Google Workspace is essentially a rebranded version of G Suite, and it's mostly marketed to businesses and classrooms for doing collaborative work. And one of the reasons that a lot of people like to use Google Workspace is because it allows you to use all of Google's tools with your own domain. So for example, it lets you use the familiar Gmail web interface in Google's mail servers to set up a you at yourbusiness.com email address. And when you connect your domain to Google Workspace, it also lets you sign in with Google for third-party services that you have an account with under the email for your own domain. Now, one example that I've seen given for people having a compromise by this attack is that someone had a Dropbox account that they created with their name at theirdomain.com and an attacker was able to create a Google Workspace account since the victim didn't have one already. And the attackers were, of course, able to circumvent the email verification for the Workspace account. I think the user mentioned that they did receive an email saying that they had gotten a Workspace account or you know that a Workspace account was created. But again, there was no link that they had to click on in the email in order to actually get that Workspace account to be activated like you normally see with this kind of account creation. And so once the Workspace account was activated, the attackers were able to sign on with Google while logged into the Workspace account to get unauthorized access to the victim's Dropbox account. Now, this is just one example, but Google says that there's been a few thousand workspace accounts that have been created since late June without the domains being verified. And a lot of people online have said that they have been dealing with this attack since early June. So that's obviously earlier than Google has said. And of course, we know that sign in with Google is an option for many, many, many online services out there on the internet. Now, Google has also said that they've fixed the issue now and they've added additional detection and protections against this kind of authentication bypass going forward. But the discrepancy in the timeline here for how long the attack's been going on might make it a bit harder for people to actually believe Google this time. One possible fix for this issue would be to disable the ability to sign in with Google on third-party accounts if that's a feature that you never use. And another better option is to just use two-factor authentication with those accounts so that an attacker would have to guess or have access to the codes that are generated by your authenticator app to get in. Even though Google services are very popular, their track record shows that you really shouldn't be trusting them with services as important as authentication. And personally, I wouldn't want my authentication handled by a web service in the first place, which is why I use offline free and open source password managers like KeePassXC for my most important accounts. Take control of your account authentication today and share this video with others so that they will do the same. And if you want to support my channel, consider buying some merch like the Come and Find It hoodie or Little Damon t-shirt from my online store, Base.Win. 10% discount store-wide for paying in Monero XMR. Have a great rest of your day.